Hello, I'm Greg. Welcome to my channel, Midnight Oil Software, and a follow-up to my comprehensive Unity tutorial, Making Asteroids from Scratch in Unity. If you watch that tutorial, you may have noticed that there seems to be a little bit of a performance hiccup, um, some lag. Every time I spawn the player's ship, the game lags for about a second, it seems. Um, and so I'm going to show you how we can diagnose that. Um, I'm also going to, I'm going to show you two ways to diagnose it. One is kind of an old fashioned kludgy way. We're just going to go to the area of code where we think it's happening. We're going to come out some, comment out some code. And when it stops happening, we can start uncommenting, removing those comments and adding code back to see what code is causing the issue. Uh, but then I'm going to show you how we can use the unity profiler to actually diagnose performance issues. And then we're gonna fix the performance issue. So first I'm gonna demonstrate it for you. So we go into our game and I hit play. I'm gonna hit space to go into the game. And I want you to watch, right when we spawn the enemy ship, watch these asteroids. Uh, you see that? They just kinda glitch there. They just kinda paused in their flight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get myself killed. I see another bug. It spawned an explosion. There is another performance glitch. And there's another glitch. So every time I spawn the player ship, there's a little bit of a glitch. And I also saw that there is a an issue where it's spawning the explosion at the player's original start position instead of their actual position. So that's something we could address as well. Uh, one thing I want to point out is I've got an error here in my console. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. It's an unsigned reference exception, and it's complaining about the player touch uh, input property on my game UI. And so right here, I'm trying to set it to inactive if we're not on an iOS or Android device. So what I've done here is I have switched back to the Windows, Mac, Linux um, platform, and I actually had never bothered to test things after I switched and added the mobile touch controls for mobile. Um, and so there's some things that I overlooked. And so one of those, if we go into our UI here and we look at our start menu UI, actually I'm in the wrong scene. Let's go into the game scene and we'll click UI and look at our game UI. You can see that this player touch input serialized field is unassigned. So all we've got to do is grab that player touch input. Oops, let go too soon. Drag that right into there. And now if I clear that error and play again, you can see there's no error in the console. Okay, so what about the performance issue? So we know what happens whenever I spawn the player ship. I'm just going to switch this back to our start menu scene. We'll save that. So if it happens when we spawn our player ship, then most likely it's happening in the game manager where we call spawn ship. There we go. So in spawn ship, something is happening here that's causing that performance glitch. Now, the obvious thing I could do is I could just comment out everything in this function and we'll jump back out into Unity. Let it recompile, hit play, hit space. Now let's see one. Yeah, there's no glitch. There's no glitch, no performance hiccup. Of course, we're not, we don't have a player ship in the scene, uh, but we know that something in that block of code caused the issue. So what we could do is we could just sort of, um, oops, uncomment out things a little bit at a time. So let's raise the player lives changed event. So what that's gonna do is it's going to decrement our number of lives. The UI is gonna update to display the ships up in the upper left corner of our screen to show how many lives we have. And we can see if that's causing the glitch. Nope, we saw an update. 
and there was no performance hiccup. So we can go to the code and let's uncomment this set game state ship spawned. Let's see if that makes it happen. Nope, I've got my ship. I can fly around. No performance hiccup. There's only one line left in there. Play music event. And by the way, I just want to point out the recommended way to diagnose these issues is with the profiler. I'm just showing you how if you just want to be lazy and, and just, you know, if you've got a general idea of where the uh, performance issue is happening, this is just one approach you can take. But um, I'm pretty sure since this is back to the original state, we're going to see that performance hiccup right there. All right, so we know it has to do with playing music. And so we could go into our music manager um, and we have this play music um, method here. Let's just, uh, let's comment this line out. Well, let's, let's comment out the whole thing here. And again, no performance hiccup. So we know that it has to do with playing music. Um, now I could continue to, to do this, to drill down into all these functions. Um, and I mean, you're getting the general idea here, right? But I can tell you this, this is the line that's causing the problem. If we comment this out so that we don't actually play a music clip, we're going to see that there's no performance hiccup. So why? Why would playing a music clip cause such a big performance hit? Um, and the reason has to do with the way I'm loading my clips. But before we fix the problem, let's see how we would diagnose this using the profiler. So we go back into Unity, let it recompile, and then we are going to go into Analysis. So this is under Window, Analysis, Profiler. And this opens up our Profiler window. And I'm just going to dock it down here and just drag this up a little bit, give us a little bit more room. And we're going to be looking at our CPU usage. We want to make sure that Record Profiling Information is on. So you can turn that on and off. And then we want to make sure that deep profile is set. All right. And I'm just going to hit play and we're going to start seeing profiling information appear in this window here. So you can see it right here and it's showing what our frames per second is as we're playing. And you can see there's occasional spikes here and there that brings us up to about 60 frames per second, you know, down from like a hundred and some frames per second. That's still all very, very acceptable. Let's go ahead and play. And boom, there's a big spike. So what we can do is we can actually drill into this guy here and we can look at our player loop and we can just go like to the next frame and the previous frame. And what we want to look at is this time in milliseconds. So this is over half a second that is spending in this frame. If we go to the previous frame, you see it's only 2.6 milliseconds, but something is happening on this frame that's taking 539 milliseconds. And we can drill in there um, and, and drill down to see where is it actually spending all that time, right? And we just keep drilling down and drilling down. So here we're in the game manager. Here we're raising that event. Remember the, the play music event. And here we are in on play music, play music. Remember that's where we pretty much isolate it. Play next track, play clip. 
So now we're in the Unity's audio source play method. You can see this is where it's spending all this time. Play helper, get handle. Ah, load F mod sound. And that's it. This is where it's spending all the time. So it's when it's loading the clip from disk that is spending all of this time. So why? Why would it do that? Well, let's go and take a look at our audio clips. So we've got this sci-fi music collection here. And we select these and we look at these in the inspector. There's some things that we can set. We could tell it, hey, I want you to preload the audio data. And we can also change the quality. And what you can do, you can drag the, you can drag this thing all the way down to one. And you're not really going to notice a difference. If we come over here and make those changes, and it's taking a while to go ahead and update the metadata for all of those clips that I selected there. All right, let's pick, pick one of these and just hit play. I mean, that still sounds fine. Even though we're really seriously reducing, we're going from 24 megabytes to one megabyte. You know, so it's only 5% of the size and it still sounds fine. Uh, we also have this music tracks folder. So let's go ahead and pick all these and we want to do the same thing. Preload audio data and just drag this quality slider all the way down. You, know, you can play around with this if you think you want it to be 10% you know, 5%, whatever, whatever sounds good to you, but you just go ahead and apply those and you can sample them here in the inspector. So let's pick Zephyr and hit play. And that sounds perfectly fine. And you can see we went again from 28 megabytes to just 1.7 megabytes. Well, let's test this in our game and let's see if it actually made a difference with the performance. Look at that. No performance glitch at all. So I hope you found that useful. And if you did, do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button. You'd be amazed at how that tells YouTube to put this video in front of more people. It basically tells people on YouTube, hey, this video is worth watching. And if you want to see more content from me and be notified, click that notification bell as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.